Today, I'm going to be taking you down the toxic rabbit hole of poisonous succulent plants. We're going to be hearing about dead hyenas. We're going to be hearing about poison tip arrows. And we're going to be hearing about what could be the most toxic plant in the world. Now, we're going to be looking at four families of plants here. One, the Kalanchoes, a beginner plant with a deadly secret. Number two, the Pachypodiums, whose spiny exterior gives a hint at their deadly interior. Number three, the Adenias, the heart-stopping cousins of the humble passion fruit. And number four, a single species of euphorbia that can not only cause blindness, but it's also been linked to mass rates of cancer all across the continent of Africa. Now, in this video, you're going to hear me use the word alkaloids a lot. What the hell is an alkaloid? Simply put, an alkaloid is a chemical found inside plants. Some of these have interesting physiological effects. Think about caffeine and how it perks us up every day. Think about morphine and its ability to numb pain. Well, the alkaloids that we're going to be looking at in the plants today don't do anything positive for us. In most instances, we're going to be looking at some of the most toxic alkaloids known to the plant kingdom. So, let's get stuck in and have a real good exploration of what these toxic plants are and whether they're worth keeping in our collection. Let's begin this exploration of toxic plants by looking at the humble Kalanchoe, a genus often associated as a gateway into collecting succulents. But today I'm not looking at any gateway plants today. I'm looking at this Lovecraftian horror, Kalanchoe deligoensis, nicknamed the mother of millions. Now, it's got this succulent stem and you can see from that stem emerge these stripy, fairly grotesque looking leaves. And at the end of each leaf, you can see these little things growing out the end. These are called plantlets. And what they do is once they reach a certain size, they'll actually fall off the plant, hit the ground, grow roots, successfully propagating in a clonal way, asexually, this mother plant. Hence the name Mother of Millions, because you can see just how many plantlets are growing on here and the potential for this plant to spread. Now, my opinion, this is quite a hideous looking plant until you get to the flowers, which are quite stunning. Now, the interesting thing about these flowers, not only are they the reason that this plant originally entered cultivation from its native Madagascar, but they also contain the highest concentration of toxic alkaloids in this whole thing. They flower typically in winter which it is right now in Australia, which means that these plants become particularly dangerous around this time of year. Now, what's the alkaloid in these? We're talking about the cardiac euphodianolide. And as the name cardiac suggests, they impact our heart. If you get this into your system, first thing that will happen, a regular heartbeat. Don't treat that quick enough results in cardiac arrest and potentially, eventually, death. Now these plants are so effective at self-propagation, they're no longer really garden plants. They're now considered, certainly in Australia, environmental weeds. I didn't get this from a garden centre. Pulled it out of the ground from beside the road, not far from my house. As an environmental weed, it means it's gotten into native habitats, it's gotten into agricultural pasture land. The end result, when plants get into these sorts of places, animals start chewing on them, and you end up with a whole lot of dead cattle, certainly in Australia, every single year. They chew these flowers off, particularly when environmental stresses cause them to perhaps not have as much other feed, chew these flowers off, 
gets into their system and over a period of three or four days first they become lethargic then they become quite sick quite ill with diarrhea and all these other things and eventually they keel over and die horrific way to go now in my opinion this is not an attractive enough plant or a worthwhile enough plant to mitigate either the toxic risk or the environmental risk so as soon as this video finishes this is going straight into the green bin see you later what a hideous thing would not recommend the keeping of Kalanchoe delagoensis however there are other Kalanchoe species that are worth collecting Kalanchoe veherensis which is a tree like Kalanchoe there are some hybrids with incredible showy flowers so don't write the genus off entirely however be aware that all Kalanchoes are indeed toxic therefore we need to be careful of them particularly around pets and children and if we can do that we can appreciate the incredible flowers that they produce if not their fairly hideous vegetative properties in some instances so that's the Kalanchoes for you next up we're looking at one of my favorite families of plants the Pachypodiums of Southern Africa and Madagascar this is Pachypodium lealii saundersii currently dormant this is a Pachypodium namaquanum it's been in a couple of my videos already both of these come from the mainland African continent now Pachypodiums prized by collectors for their fat thickened cordiciform trunks they've also got pretty hectic spines which generally speaking would keep grazing herbivores away however you get through those spines into the trunk and you're going to find some pretty potent alkaloids in this case the alkaloids present are what we call cardenolides and these cardenolides as that prefix suggests also like those kalanchoes affect the heart results in heart failure in fact cardenolides are exactly the same alkaloid that we find in the notoriously toxic oleander so these things are not to be trifled with now there's a really interesting historical aspect to these plants and their poison there are records of the bushman tribes from namibia during times of war dipping their arrows in the sap of pachypodium lealii covering them with poison kind of early form of chemical warfare i suppose imagine that take an arrow to the shoulder non-lethal everything you think is fine and not long after that you go out with heart failure not a great way to go now interestingly enough pachypodium lealii is only mid-range on the toxicity level by far the most toxic pachypodium is namaquanum as well as the madagascan species rutenbergianum due to their toxicity therefore it is important that we take care when we're handling these especially if we're taking cuttings or pruning them back gloves eye protection is a good idea as well we just don't want to get that sap into us are they worth collecting absolutely generally speaking pachypodiums are going to be cared for by people who have specialist interests in this type of plant they're going to understand the risks and take appropriate precautions however you don't want to get these anywhere near where pets can get into them where kids can get into them because although these spines are probably a pretty good deterrent you just don't want to take the risk so that's the pachypodiums fantastic plants but they do have a bit of a deadly secret now if the pachypodiums harbor a deadly secret this next family of plants are quite open in their role as dealers of death and that is the adenias this is adenia glauca 
you can see that fat cordiciform trunk. It's actually relatively mild on the scale of toxicity when we're talking about these plants. But this tall spindly one, this is a Denia venenata, and this is not a plant to be trifled with. The Denias have quite a wide range. They come from Africa, Madagascar, up across the Arabian Peninsula into Southern Asia, and even as far as Northern Australia. And they are among some of the most toxic plants on earth. Prized by collectors for their fat trunks, what we say cordiciform or pachycaul trunks. Most of them grow as vines and therefore look best after a heavy prune. Now imagine that, you've got these plants full to brimming with toxic sap and collectors who just want to chop them to bits. It's a recipe for disaster. Now, these particular plants contain alkaloids called lectins. And lectins are in some instances, in some species, suggested to be some of the most potent toxins found in any plant on earth. In fact, there is one species of Adenia called Adenia volkensii, which may rival ricin from the castor bean as the greatest toxin found in any plant. Pretty incredible stuff. Like the pachypodiums, African warriors have dipped their arrowheads in the sap of these plants as a form of chemical warfare. And more recently, African farmers have laced meat left out in their, their pasture lands so that hyenas that have been preying on their livestock will take the meat and suffer a pretty rapid and horrible death. Now, these lectins, they cause massive cellular death. A horrible, violent way to die. So we have to be very careful in handling these things. Like I said, these are plants that demand a good prune every now and then. So when we're doing that, we're going to want to make sure that we use all the appropriate protective equipment. Are these plants worth keeping? Well, they are stunning. They're absolutely beautiful plants. They come in all different shapes and sizes, different forms. If you're willing to ensure that you take care, then yeah, absolutely. Grow adenias. They're well worth, the, worth growing. But we just have to be mindful of the fact that we're growing plants that could very easily kill us if we ingest them. So keep that in mind. Keep them away from pets. Keep them away from kids. And be very careful yourself whenever you're handling these things. I wouldn't even touch this plant without gloves. Just not worth the risk. So that's the Adenias. Terrifying but magnificent nonetheless. Let's move on to one final plant. See how horrible it can be. Now to finish up today, I'm not gonna be focusing on any one particular family. Instead, I'm gonna look at one species you might be familiar with. Certainly in Australia, we see it grown by landscapers and it's in gardens all over the country. I'm talking about Euphorbia tyricale and this plant might just be worse than anything else I've described so far today. Now, grows natively in Africa in a huge band across the whole continent from east to west. Typically, grows as a tree. We might be more familiar with it as a shrub being pruned back, particularly in gardens. And it's a euphorbia. And like all euphorbias, contains this thick, white, milky sap, which is called latex. Interestingly, that latex is actually based on a hydrocarbon like petrol. There have been research into using euphorbia sap and the sap of this plant in particular as a replacement for fuel. Now, not all of these euphorbia saps are created equal. They're all toxic to a certain degree, but euphorbia tyricales is the most potent by an order of magnitude. So strong is the latex in this plant that it's quite caustic. 
Get it on your skin. It'll cause blisters. Get it into your eyes. Cause blindness. That's not the worst thing about this plant. It actually contains tumour promoting agents. What that means is essentially this plant with prolonged exposure can cause cancer. Where it grows natively in Africa, it's often used as a herbal remedy. With such powerful sap, it's used for things like burning off warts, for example. In some instances, it's even used to treat cancers. And where it has been used in these herbal ways, it actually shows significant correspondence with endemic cancers across the whole continent. It's called the lymphoma belt of Africa. So this is a plant which, despite appearing everywhere, can actually really fuck us up. Is it worth growing? Absolutely not. This is a plant you can find online. Pictures of animals, pets, that have been burnt back just from contact with it. I think a lot of people who have this plant growing in their gardens have no idea of the danger that they expose themselves to. This one here is going straight into the green bin alongside Kalanchoe delagoensis as soon as I finish this video. Now, what we have to be aware of with this plant, it's not going to cause cancer in the garden, realistically. But it's a plant that's often pruned back and you just have to cover yourself. You have to ensure, especially that your eyes are covered, Go down the rabbit hole online of stories of people getting the sap in their eyes. It's no good. Cover your bare skin, long sleeves, gloves, all of those things. If you can do all of that, keep it away from pets. Maybe it's worth it for these colours. In my opinion, I wouldn't be keeping it. So, those are some of the most toxic plants for any succulent collector. Like I said, keep them, but be aware of the dangers and take measures to ensure you're not exposed to those toxins. Once again, I encourage you, reach out if you've got any questions. If you've got any ideas for topics you want me to explore, by all means, you can find me on Instagram at bayou.brothers or you can follow me on YouTube if you want to. That's it for today. Hope it's been a pleasure. Hope you learned something. For now, happy growing, and I'll see you next time.